Man, if I don't end up with pneumonia before this one's done, it'll be a miracle. <laughs> Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Vicious RV with what I think is one of the most exciting and creative new bunkhouse floor plans I've seen in the last couple years. And I feel like last year it kind of slipped under the radar. This is the 28 VBXL. Uh, you can find this in both Salem and Wildwoods. Those are the exact same RVs in case you weren't aware. They just have a different exterior color on the skin. Beyond that, they are the same thing. But the, the VB means Versa Bunk. This has a private rear, you could just call it a bunk room, but it can convert into a bunk room, into a playroom, into a dog kennel. It is begging for an office conversion. Um, the, the 22 updates hit this floor plan nicely and some of the uh, Wildwoods and Salem's, it kind of felt like, eh, nothing really changed. Um, they, they got smarter, they got better, they did what they did only better this time around. And it is the flexibility of this rear room that I think really makes it sing. The fact that it gives us uh, a private space in the back versus just like a couple corner bunks open uh, in, in the middle of the living room, as it were. Now, um, it's uh, just under 6,200 pounds dry weight, I think, which sounds very half-ton towable. And properly equipped half-tons, I do think you'll find this within your uh, means and capacity. However, it is a fairly long bunkhouse. By the time you privatize bunks and have a super slide and a bedroom, they get long pretty quick. So that is one major factor to consider. And it's things like that that we're gonna do for you. We're gonna give you, I always call it the good, the bad, the ugly with everything in between. I wanna show you where she soars. I wanna show you maybe where she falls a little flat so that you can know you're getting your second RV the first time around. Hang with us here. This is a fun one, I'm telling you. All right, so. I want to get you back to the bunk room, the Versa bunk, the convertible office bunk, den, living space, whatever you want to call it, uh, as quickly as possible. But I want you to kind of have a little bit of a lay of the land here as we go through here. Notice those slide side windows open for airflow. Then you have the big panoramic viewing windows over here. They want some maximized viewing windows on this thing. And no, that's not daylight creeping in above the slide. They're just not using the Labatt Blue Disco Lights above their slide out, which I think a lot of people appreciate. Now, one of the cool things with the X-Lights, uh, they are completely carpetless, which is actually, I think, a benefit that they have above their big brother, uh, Salem and Wildwood, I don't know what you want to call it, Full Blood Editions. Now, um, the uh, that slide system right there that is actually the secret in the sauce. And one of the main differences between, say, an X-Light uh, and a, a, a full Wildwood in that it allows the RV to be smaller, lighter, less expensive. Um, and uh, basically because they don't have to punch a hole through the chassis for the Ram bar, they don't need a taller chassis beam, you know? Now, like I said, I want to get you back here into this Versa bunk room. And I want to spend some serious time on this because I think... This is one of the coolest, most uh, interesting sort of flexible function situations you've seen. Now, the bunk on the right here, it does flip up out of the way. And what's interesting is that right there is a queen bed that converts into a sofa space. Now, one of the interesting 22 updates is on any Wildwood or Salem flip up bunk, you've actually got a little bit of a chalkboard arrangement going on here. So... If you're looking for something uh, like a little bit more of a uh, an office or a mobile learning situation, I could see this one working for you. You may also notice not only these carpetless, they use um, cabinet side duct heating, like you see that black circle by the floor down there. Um, little maybe kind of shoe garage back here for the kids or whoever you put back here. Uh, and obviously, if you're going to flip that bunk up and down, you don't want to mount a TV up here on the wall like you may be thinking when you look at it. It just sort of all depends. Now, what I also want to do is flip-flop transformer this thing all around so you get to see everything it does because it is cool. And I guess you could say that's what puts the Versa in Versa Lounge. Yes, sir. But did you look at this. Look at the good details here. All the windows in this bunk room open for airflow. There's household, there's USB plugs all over the place in here. And I want to clarify something. I got a little ahead of myself. I got a little excited. I said, oh, that sofa is a queen bed of sorts. It is a camp queen in measurement. It is 60 by 74. But 
I mean, try how many like potential true two bedroom models out there? You know, if you wanted to put like a box springer or something in there, I don't know. You know, there, there's different things you could convert a, a, and use this one for here. Um, oh, you know what this could actually really work well for? Um, if you have a, uh, a a child maybe with uh, special needs, you know, they're light and or sound sensitive. They need their own little place to kind of decompress. This could be just a nice, like I said, extra bedroom for uh, uh, for your kid back here. You know, it's more than just a bunk room is what I'm saying. Now, if you watch my videos, you know, I'm more than happy to also critique things. I am really not a fan of the converter box being located back here in this room. Um, kids are curious and their little fingers start pushing buttons they don't need to push. And I don't mean just pushing mom and dad's buttons when they start, you know, griping at one another. It's just, you really are going to have to make sure you tell your kids, don't touch the black box, kids. But like I said, this makes a fantastic office conversion. And think about it. You've got a private bedroom up front. you got your nice, dedicated middle living room. You have a full, dedicated, private, climate-controlled rear office option potentially built in here. And nothing says you have to leave those bunks up there. I mean, they flip up and down. You could always put them up and down. You could use one as shelving one is storage there's no rules on how you can or cannot use this thing it's completely up to you i mean you know case in point look at this okay class i want you to breathe in and when you breathe out let out all that stress ready one two three why does nobody ever sign up for a second class so yeah it's flexible Kind of like my teaching schedule, uh, if you hadn't noticed. Anyway, um, back to kind of the original arrangement. I just wanted to show you, too. You know, all the windows, instead of having shades that the kids can mutilate and mangle, they're just curtains. You know, they're just curtains. You can It's, it's curtains for this room. That's what it is right there. And at the end of the day, lights out, kids. Go to your room. Go to bed. End of the day. Which is kind of cool, because they have their own private space back there. Well, you can still be up adulting a little bit, uh, you know. So anyway, back here to the living room. Um, this is the exact same living room and bedroom as a 273 Salem Wildwood. And kind of like we saw the Versa Bunk, we are also featuring the Versa Lounge. And what's really cool about this thing is, just like that rear room, it only does everything. If you want a giant, long napping lounge, that if you notice that seating faces what would otherwise be a 90-degree neck wrecker entertainment center, as is uh, technically known, uh, you can do that. But if you're like, I don't, uh, no, it's mealtime. Like, I don't want this, this little mini dinette desk bench thing over there. Like, I just want a normal dinette and sofa. Well, good news. Because it can be exactly that. You can convert it into just a generic jackknife sofa and a big U dinette in this floor plan. One of the other really cool things here, let me see if I can get you a look at it. Um, it's just an open pocket under that rear bench back there. So if you like to curl your legs under you on that rear bench, which is, you know sometimes is very nice, uh, you can do that too. This is one of the very few times you're gonna hear me say, a pedestal dinette is the correct dinette. Because it is a step-up slide-out, if that was a free-floating table, it wouldn't be hard for somebody to bump it and knock it off like your finisher a Monopoly game at, uh, you know, family Christmas time. At least, I've told you before, that's how my family Christmases and uh, Monopoly games always ended. But the thing is, uh, <laughs> we're still not done with the Versa Lounge. Because as you see, we have the full, like, blackout night roller shades here. And what's awesome is that's not just the living room. Now, we saw in the bunk room they went with more of a curtain, so the kids didn't ruin something nice. I'm uh, just saying. Um, <laughs> and in the bedroom, though, you'll see the same blackout shades. But look at the fact we have a full super slide super sleeper. Now, it looks a little funny. Like, you still see a little bit of the table stick out. But if you really look, if you draw a line, those cushions right there line up exactly with the, uh, the sleeper sofa. So that's kind of the... Uh, the idea, that's sort of the, the visual line. Some people, they start playing Tetris with all the cushions and they can't quite figure it out. It's because you're kind of overthinking it. And then down below here, you can't fully see those totes right there, but look at the size of these things. You have 20.3 cubic foot of food safe storage included in that Versa Lounge. Now, you don't have to use them just under the, the, the sofa and the tables and everything. If you wanted to take them out and use them somewhere else, there's absolutely nothing that says you couldn't do that. 
Um, while we're looking at storage, we're gonna kind of cross over some, some kitchen, some bathroom stuff. I don't know why I said while we're looking at storage. I guess because we're looking at a pantry, but we're also about to look at the bathroom here. So anyway, I, you know what? I don't know where my mind was going right there. I just know that it landed at a dead end. <laughs> and uh, what do you think about this? A nice rectangular shower as opposed to uh, a common travel trailer tub. Um, there's more and more people who are looking for something like this. And I don't think that tubs are dead. I don't think tubs are pointless. Um, I just think that it is cool that you're seeing the market evolve a little bit here. Now, the RV's six and a half foot tall. So that means a tall goofball like me, uh, when he's done doing his nerd yoga class uh, and screaming his brains out, my head has to be in the bubble. But notice we do have a skylight. We do have a radius, uh, like, you know, shower curtain track or whatever here at the top. We have full shower surround paneling. There's some nice touches in here. Like when you look at this, I certainly understand why people would say, um, you know, entry level segment. That's kind of the, the area of the marketplace that we're looking at currently. But that doesn't have to mean badly done. Now, you will see things like the normal four-inch fart fan up here instead of a nice big vent fan. But I say all the time, that's easy stuff for us to take care of for you. If that's something you're interested in, just let us know. By the way, centralized air. Now, more and more companies have finally started adopting central air in their smaller, uh, you know, entry-level family bunk models or whatever. It is still not 100% across the board, though. So make sure you know what you're getting. And if you've never camped before, if you don't have that central air, that means that you're not getting even cooling in your bathroom, your bunk room, your bedroom. You're only really getting air here in the living room. Not a recipe for comfort. Now these 12 volt DC compressor fridges, uh, they're all over the place. They've become really the dominant fridge in travel trailers at least. Now it is a little bit regional. I know that uh, some of our Western Bishes RV stores uh, still lean pretty heavily on that gas electric two-way just because they're far more energy efficient when you are boondocking. Um, but here in the Midwest, man, they're all about that 12 volt, basically. Kind of like Megan Trainers, all about that base. So once again, if you're in lounge mode on the sofa, that's your view of the television. Or if you're over here at the kind of like, you know, two-thirds dinette desk lounge area, the double lounge, the DL, as it were, keep it on the DL over here. Sort of what it looks like, just to give you an idea. That's actually something I like about this. Because if you're stuck inside on a rainy day, you got the Versa bunk room for some space. Mom and Dad, you got the nice big couch where you can stretch out and relax over here. But you still got like a little space that you could plop somebody down, make them a little sandwich, you know, a little coloring book or a uh, board game action, something like that. Whatever works for you. Nice wastebasket space down there. There is a drawer being covered up by that door right now, by the way. And notice how they put shelving in their overhead cabinetry in the kitchens of these, which is just a nice touch. It really doubles your storage capacity. The electric space heat and footsie fryer down here is a standard issue item on these. Very nice when it is a little bit chilly to help get some of that extra nip out of the air. And I like the little extra accent light they put down here in the 22 series uh, in that big kind of wide open, open air shoe garage. And once again, we have a door for private bed spaces. We have the same night roller shades in here that we have in the rest of the RV. Um, let me actually slide around the corner and get you in here so I can take a look at the CPAP storage shelves. Notice that little side pocket cutaway right there. You have household and USB outlets, but they put the household outlets actually inside the hanging closet, which is a little bit different. But again, uh, whether it's a, you know, you're going to use it if you put a phone charger adapter in there, even though you have USB plugs over here or a light or a fan, I don't know, like you could do whatever you wanted with it. Essentially, it just, it just opens up opportunities. Little laundry basket down there is something else that they just added. Now, uh, I'm trying to do a better, better job constantly of letting you know things like bed sizes. I do want to let you know that every single Wildwood x light and almost every single full Wildwood always run on Camp Queens with almost no exception. So this is a 60 by 74 short queen. I know that's something that not a lot of people like, but I'm willing to hit that head on so that you know you're getting good information. Uh, information. Uh, I got to go do some more of that yoga stress, guys. Um, information from us here at Bish's RV. Nailed it. But in case you hadn't noticed, these guys are pretty good about making one thing do more than one thing. So under the bed here, like, first of all, this is our full pass-through. And they separated it from inside to outside, but you could also access it 
from the inside if you wanted to. I like how they're using a plywood deck instead of OSB down there too. It's actually a really good indicator that this is a brand that gets to use primary alpha materials, not secondary uh, re repurposed materials, you know. Um, uh, the Oh, and, and down below that, by the way, handy dandy little shoe garage. Now, all this being said, we've looked at a lot of fun stuff. But what about the road mode? But our these are like husbands. They ain't always perfect. And in fact, I've yet to see one that is always perfect. And uh, in this case, this RV does have one potential Achilles heel. That is the road mode accessibility or maybe lack thereof. Now you see how this step up slide comes right up to the peninsula. What I like to do here is I like to plant my hand on the counter to keep some weight there. I like to step in as far as I can onto the slide so that I'm stressing things as little as possible with my fat dad bod. And then you can get in here. You can get to the uh, the refrigerator and everything. Then there's hurdle number two. You have to kind of decide what you want to do here. First of all, when you're traveling, you should put that table down for transit mode. I think it's just a better way to go. It's less inclined to wiggle loose on those mounts. If you do that, and then you're willing to do the loop knee walker maneuver, which is nerdism number 37, you can decide, do I want to be able to slip through back to the bunks in transit, or do I leave the bathroom door open before I close the slide and uh, have bathroom accessibility in transit, but you have to pick one or the other. So uh, that's that extra kind of stuff that we like to bring you here, that extra, you know, food for thought. Do you appreciate little nuggets like that? Now I want chicken nuggets. Ah, oh, man. Anyway, what I was going to say is hit that subscribe button. Moving on. <laughs> Now, the weather's trash, but we're not going to let that stop us today. We're going to keep on trucking. It is currently like between 31 to 33 degrees and uh, precipitating, as it were. So we're, we're jumping back and forth between flurries and snow and just freezing rain. And you can see it washing down the nose of the trailer right there. It is terribly pleasant to be out here. But that's uh that's the job that's the life so we sign up we take care of our customers doesn't matter what the weather is and frankly the weather conditions i'm in uh are is absolutely nothing compared to some of the stuff that our techs have to deal with from time to time i'm not trying to gross people up but literally consider that our techs have to deal with uh black tank issues sometimes um not everyone is cool and empties their tanks before they bring them in so you know, I'm not going to sit here and complain about being a little cold. I don't have the worst job in the dealership. That is a nicely sized front pass-through right there as well. Nice big door uh, where you can get things in and out. And you see another one of the uh, 2022 updates right here where they went with a dry erase board on the inside of that baggage door. Very similar to like what they did with the Versabunks uh, going with the chalkboard system. You can also notice the magnet holdbacks there. That is something that showed up originally uh, a year or two ago, I think. You see the stable steps? They've gone to standard across the board here. And that is one of the reasons I actually give Wildwood and or and Salem, as it were, since, again, they're the same thing. i got to make a better uh, effort to make sure people are aware of that. That's something I haven't done well in the past. Um, but uh, I, I call them best-in-class stability, and that is one of the reasons right here. Now, this is one of the only areas where this model differs from its sister, the 273. The 273 has a camp kitchen in the back under the bunks. This one puts a small camp kitchenette, no sink, but it has a cold water sprayer port on the left, you might notice there, um, over here, basically under the kitchen cabinets. Now, that does mean that we get the more functional Versabunk. It also means that we lose out on some kitchen drawer space on the inside, so everything is always a give and a get. Now, pardon me here as I uh, break up the video a little bit more than I normally do. I don't want to let that weather in here. I was talking about stability. Um, and I'm not talking about emotional stability. Um, <laughs> that's a different topic for a different day. I'm not qualified to talk on those things. I want to talk about campsite stability. All four stabilizer jacks on this front and rear have JT Strongarm stabilizer bars. If you're not familiar with those things, they are the business. You, like, you hear a lot of hype about them. Uh, I, I am of the belief it is totally justified. It is completely real. That is not just a hype train rolling through on this thing going choo-choo. Um, what that's going to do is it, it you, you, you drop your jack leg down like normal, and then you just tighten those little uh, T-handles. You could, it, just by doing it by hand, you will take almost all 
of the wiggle and the jiggle out of the RV. So as those little kiddo bodies in that back bunk room are bouncing around like crazy, it doesn't shimmy and shake your head around in the uh, the front master bedroom, as it were. Now, um, the uh, Salem Cruise Light, the Wildwood x Light series that we're looking at right here, they do have a walkable roof. They have a plywood floor. Uh, they do not have provisions for a ladder. So that is just one of those things that you want to kind of keep in mind. I do, again, like how those upper bunk windows slide open for airflow. And it's interesting, the slide side windows open for airflow on these, but our primary big viewing windows do not. They just give us more of a, a panoramic viewing arrangement. Um, it looks a little bit funky, but people that we've talked to that have purchased one of these and camped in them said, you know, it actually works just fine. I get more of my breeze through the side windows anyway. I, I'm, not, I'm not sitting here saying this is better. Uh, don't, don't misconstrue what I'm saying. I would certainly prefer all windows to open for airflow but it's not bad. Actually, let me get you up close here for a couple things. Um, if you want to add slide awnings, she's prepped and ready, but look at the back side of that shade up there. You see that white strip? So um, the windows aren't tinted on these. That makes the whole RV look and feel brighter when the windows are open, but if the, the sun is just pumping through and it is smoking you out of this thing, burning you out of it, you pull those shades down and you basically put a white heat blocker over your big windows right there. Not to mention they're the nice roller shades. Uh, so you have completely privatized things. That is one of the nice things they do here. And those roller shades actually uh, dip down further than just the windows. So you don't have light bleeding through like if someone is uh, taking a little snooze on the sofa or something like that. One other thing I wanna point out for you up here real quick is that simple battery disconnect switch. And then as we back up, you can't really see it from here because again, I can't really get you on the ladder or, or the roof of this one since there's no ladder. And, you know, frankly, um, it's just not conducive weather to being on an RV roof anyway. I tried that yesterday and decided uh, I, I, I didn't need to break my neck. Anyway, what I wanna get at is these are now roof solar prepped. So if you are wanting to add some kind of solar package, build it a little bit more off-grid or, uh, you know, just extended dry camp friendly, or you just want a battery tender. That's all stuff that can be more easily applied to these now. So like I said, she's not perfect, but overall, I like her. I will leave you some links in the video description specifically to the 273 Salem Wildwood x -Lite. Um, the uh, or cruise light, as they call it in Salem. Um, the reason being, it is the exact same bedroom, it's the exact same living room and kitchen. Uh, the only difference is what they did in the bunk room, where the other one has an L bunk, this has the Versa bunk system. I'd love you to check that out and let me know which one would you go with and why. So as always, if you appreciate what we do, even risking catching pneumonia out here, take care, stay safe, have fun, and make sure you like and subscribe, everyone.